Hi everyone, my name is Evan Ortlieb and welcome back to another Mixed Methods Design. Today we're going to be talking about concurrent triangulation design, so let's go ahead and get started. So what is this design and how does it differ from, let's say, other sequential designs in nature? This one is characterized by two or more methods that are used to confirm, cross-validate, or corroborate findings and results within a study. So you're going to be collecting both quantitative and qualitative data uh, concurrently at the same time. And so an easy way to remember that is, is just a CC, concurrently collected. And then the analysis is going to occur afterwards. So you're going to collect all the data, um, both qualitatively and quantitatively, and you're not going to analyze or interpret that data until later on. So why would you choose this particular design? Well, one of the reasons is that um, you're able to um, really, you know, build upon uh, and utilize the strengths of both quantitative and qualitative methods to overcome any weaknesses that you may have in some of the particular methods. So, for example, let's say we were doing interviews. Well, you can't always uh, quantitatively look at that. Sometimes it's overly subjective in terms of how you interpret uh, that information and that data. Uh, so you may want to balance that out with some other surveys, some Likert scale surveys, so that you can look at that from a quantitative approach. So that's just one advantage to sort of utilizing both quantitative and qualitative uh, domains. What does this design look like? So you can look right here. And first off, we're going to be starting, as I mentioned before, separately uh, collecting both quantitatively and qualitatively data at the same time. And then afterwards, and only afterwards, are we going to begin the analysis process. Also, another thing to note is even though these analyses are occurring concurrently um, afterwards, uh, it's difficult to literally do at the exact same time. So technically, they're going to vary, but it's going to be done over the same period of time, if you will. Secondly, the triangulation uh, that occurs, it occurs once all the findings our results are in. And so you can see right here where I'm circling, here's where you're going to look at any triangulation that may occur based upon these results that you have in both qualitative and quantitative domains. And you're going to be looking and comparing and contrasting, looking for similarities or instances of congruence, but also differences in instances of incongruence. Um, those are, you know, uh, what data is complementary in nature and what data kind of uh, uh, differentiates and, and which data say that say it's X but other data say it's Y and how are you going to address those issues we're going to talk about that momentarily and finally in the interpretation phase is the very end and again it doesn't occur uh, until all the results are in and the triangulation has already occurred the basics and the nuances of this particular design include again that I said the data is con collected concurrently or at the same time from quantitative and qualitative domains, that there's no priority given to either method. And so we're, we're going to capitalize both quant and qual in this, in this instance. Um, additionally, the interpretation, as I said, um, uh, happens later on, uh, even after the analysis stage, sometimes during the analysis stage. And theory um, or a uh, conceptual framework may be present, but it doesn't necessarily dictate this particular method's uh, design. If it did, it would be more of a transformative one in nature. All right, quick review of what are the important things to remember for concurrent triangulation design. First, that the design involves a single study containing both quant qualitative and quantitative data collection at the same time, and that the purpose of this investigation is to validate those findings generated from each of those methods so that the qualitative can validate the quantitative and vice versa. And an example of this in practice uh, is, is as follows. In a longitudinal study of early literacy development, Terry and Kia conducted semi-structured in-depth interviews with eight mothers through home visits. And that was conducted uh, and collected through uh, uh, qualitative means. And then you also collected school data uh, on achievement scores in early literacy in reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And so they collected both the interview data from a qualitative standpoint, the achievement scores from a quantitative one. And the authors of this study were able to identify five common practices 
among participatory mothers in this inter in, through these interviews, which were corroborated by high listening scores in the early literacy profile assessment. So therefore, um, what could be deduced or interpreted from that is that um, many of the mothers engaged in read alouds and other sort of practices um, where the mother was doing the reading to the child. And as a result, uh, more times than not, the students, the children rather, had higher listening scores, um, again, correlated to that practice. And similarly, the objective measures of the early literacy profile addressing writing proficiency indicated a low level of writing ability as supported by findings in the interviews where mothers reported little knowledge on writing acquisition in relation or compared to reading acquisition. And so because the mothers didn't feel as equipped in terms of teaching writing, they, um, they veered away from that in their homes. And as a result, these children um, had lower writing ability scores than they did reading ones. And these are uh, some findings that would have not otherwise have been possible through the use of mixed methods, through the combination of the in-depth interviews, but also in comparison to the achievement scores that were gathered um, from this uh, school-based uh, assessment that was given. And these authors note that the concurrent use of qualitative and quantitative measures added to the depth and the scope of their findings. Some challenges with concurrent triangulation design involve that there's much effort and expertise required because it's sometimes challenging to gather concurrent data uh, and, and try to give equal weight to both of those types of data. So in fact, you, you may have expertise in one of these areas and not both. And sometimes you need to um, you know, bring in another uh, person to your research project who has that qualitative expertise or has that quantitative expertise uh, to assist you in that regard, or you may even be able to train other uh, researchers in both of these means just to have more eyes look at this data set. Secondly, uh, researchers often face challenges uh, of what to do when these results between the qualitative and quantitative sectors don't necessarily uh, see eye to eye or agree, and how do we resolve this? Uh, and that's often done by collecting even more data. So it can be time consuming uh, in that regard as well. This is just a little bit of information, again, about concurrent triangulation design in mixed methods research. I'm here. My name is Evan Ortley. Feel free to reach out anytime. Here's my Twitter handle, as well as my YouTube channel, and I look forward to hearing from you soon with any questions or queries you may have. And again, if you have other um, questions about uh, different mixed methods designs, feel free to take a look at other videos I have in my channel. Take care and all the best.